So that is the general process of taking that DWG directly into a 3D part. And of course, it's not straightforward. With this example, again, that was a fairly simple part, a single feature, some diameter dimensions, we had to go back and we had to fix a lot of different stuff. I mean, just to be honest, there was all the edges that we needed to fix and we needed to take care of the dimensions to make sure that they were parametric. But now we have an exact copy of the 2D and this exact copy is also parametric in the fact that we can change any of these dimensions and update the part. If this thing, instead of being two inches long, if we want to come in here and it actually needs to be two and a half inches long now, we can make that change and it's gonna update the solid part and we know that it's solid and we know that it's fixed and we know that it's completely based on those dimensions uh, because we did all the work that we needed to to fix the 2D DWG file and work with it that way. Now that I've brought that in, I wanna show you another way that we can handle this process. And I'm gonna do that by starting a new file. Again, we're gonna start a standard IPT file, but this time, instead of going into a sketch, we're gonna use the import option and we're gonna bring in that same DWG file. We're gonna say open. We're gonna select the XY plane and just select the origin. And it's gonna tell us that this file isn't saved, that we need to save it because it might cause problems. And then it tells us that inserting an AutoCAD DWG creates an associative DWG underlay. Uh, so we'll talk about what that means to us uh, and how we can actually make use of it. So now what we have is not a sketch, but we have what's called the revolved part DWG that's directly inside of our model browser. So as we're looking at this, what does this mean? What can we do with this information? Well, now we're gonna go into a sketch using the XY plane, create a new sketch, and in the projected geometry section, by default it'll say project geometry, but at the very bottom there's something called project DWG geometry. So we're gonna come in and we're gonna project these edges that we want. So just simply click around, grab the ones you want, and then once you're done, we're gonna finish the sketch. So if we hide this, we're gonna go ahead and hide the visibility. What we've done is we've created a sketch. If we go back and edit the sketch, we've created a sketch that is linked to that original file. You notice that nothing can be moved, even though there's no dimensions here, nothing can be moved, nothing can be tweaked here. Now at any point in time, we can turn the visibility back on of this. And let's say that we need to project a bit more information. I need to grab this and this, and then we're gonna go ahead and, and exit out of it. And then we're gonna hide DWG. So now I have some additional information. I'm going to turn these into construction lines, and then I'm going to add a construction line from their midpoints, and that's going to be my revolve axis. So why is this important? What does this process offer us that's different than the other? Well, we're still going to create our solid. We're still going to create our revolve. It still has all the same dimensions, but I can't change that sketch. I can't update it. We've actually put the DWG file directly into our inventor file. So using this method of importing a DWG into a plane and then using that project DWG option inside of the sketch has a couple benefits for us. Now, if you're using AutoCAD to create these DWG files, this means that you have a link between the DWG file and the inventor file. So you can go into your DWG file inside of, in this case, AutoCAD, and you can make changes to the dimensions and then it'll parametrically update your inventor file. So that's something that is a, a great benefit. Again, this is something that Autodesk has incorporated into the DWG functionality that allows you to work with AutoCAD and Inventor. All right, so let's take a look at revolvedpart.dwg. So we're gonna right click on it and notice that there are some different options in here. All right, so we have suppress link or break link. Now, if you suppress the link, it's not going to update if the DWG file updates with AutoCAD. If you break the link, you're essentially cutting all ties between the two files. Suppressing them at least allows you to turn it on and off if you want to. There's also some translate and redefine options in here. And if we select redefine, it's just going to bring us back and have us select different entities to bring in. All right, but for the most part, this process works very well if you're using AutoCAD to create these DWG files, but you want to take them from AutoCAD 2D 
into 3D and Inventor for some additional functionality. Maybe it's stress analysis, maybe it's building assemblies, whatever the case might be. You have that interchange between AutoCAD and Inventor where you can use the DWG files and leverage the power of the two. This also helps in instances where maybe you're in a corporation where you have 10 Autodesk accounts and let's say nine of them are actually AutoCAD seats and one of them is Inventor. You can do a lot of work on the 2D side inside of AutoCAD and then have somebody work in 3D with Inventor if you want to. Of course, AutoCAD is 3D as well, but there are some workflows where this might make sense. For our example, just you need to think about the process of making these files and what the end result is going to be. If you just want an exact copy, if you're using AutoCAD and you have the link between the DWG files, maybe using this option where you import it and then project that DWG information into a sketch works very well for you. If on the other hand, this is legacy data that is long gone. Maybe, maybe the legacy data came from some other CAD package. Maybe you just have these residual DWG files lying around. Well, in that case, you can go into a sketch, you can import them, and then you just have to take your time, be patient, and make those updates. Now, in a lot of cases, for a simple file like this, it might be easier just to redraw it based on the 2D drawing. But in other cases where you have more complicated files, maybe more information, maybe additional fillets or threaded holes or whatever the case might be, it might be easier just to bring the DWG file in, grab those referenced edges, and use the sketch doctor to try to like, heal them up and put them all back together. But note, when you start to play around with this, some of the options when we were opening and importing these files affected the geometry. It flipped this edge around the other way. It made the dimensions non-associative. Uh, when we tried to force some constraints on it, it really just did not have good results for us. That's not the case with every file. Sometimes it's hit or miss. So don't just import it one way and assume that way is always going to work fine. Play around with it. It just takes a couple seconds to import it one way versus another, and it could save you a lot of time in terms of manual edits. Make sure that you save your files. Of course, I'll save these, and, and you will have them with the course that you can play around with. But it's always a good idea to save your file so you don't lose any of your work.